If you're thinking about buying an Aprilia of any kind or this Aprilia Tuano V4 1100 factory, I'm going to tell you some things you need to know before you buy one uh, because you might just change your mind. Let's go for a ride. You are watching Cycle Cruises all on one motorcycle channel. Subscribe today. Continually video suggestions, but you may find what you're looking for by visiting my website at cyclecruiser.com and click on the menu tab my videos and Those are a bunch of playlists with all of my videos categorized in them to make it easier for you to navigate through first off I Want to say this bike is absolutely amazing. It's an awesome bike There are some cons to the bike and there's some cons to owning an Aprilia, period, man. <laughs> but I think a lot of you guys know some of these things. But as far as this bike here, first off, I want to tell you this bike has absolutely no trunk. I think some of you guys probably already know that. See here? This is what you got. <laughs> You can't even fit a, a insurance card in there. It, I don't know. It, that's not meant to store anything in. I wouldn't even put an insurance card in there because it might catch on fire or something <laughs> with all the wires in there. But uh, but that, that's not a big deal to me anyhow because I have a YZ450 you know FX and a WR250R that has no trunk. I just carry a backpack, so I'm good. But the V4 on this bike is absolutely amazing, man. You know what I'm saying? It's the V4 is pretty rare, you know, compared to all the other bikes that are on the market. This there's, there's only a, a few of them that have the V4 engine, and and I'll tell you guys, I'm sold on it. It is absolutely amazing. But I will tell you, as far as owning an Aprilia, a lot of you guys know that uh, these bikes pretty much have tighter maintenance intervals than the Japanese bikes. This bike has uh, in, uh, maintenance intervals at, at like every 3,500 miles. It's not a big deal to me because I don't, you know, I have four bikes and I don't ride a ton. Uh, my WR250R only has 2,000 miles on it. And my CBR1000RR, which I had since 2014, has freaking uh, only 7,000 something miles on there. <laughs> this bike is absolutely amazing though I'll tell you the cons of owning an Aprilia and this bike I'll tell you the pros outweigh the cons though <laughs> this bike is so amazing though it is it really is man oh my goodness so amazing but uh yeah you know maintenance intervals are tight guys uh, for those of you could do a ton of miles and you're on a budget you're probably not going to be looking at this bike <laughs> uh, this is not a budget friendly bike uh, and also you know as far as what they charge at the dealership per hour for Aprilia uh, the bikes they charge I think it's like $95 an hour compared to I think like 70 something or 80 for the Japanese bikes so they you you will pay more per hour and you're going to be taking your bike in more often if you have them do the maintenance for you uh, some of you guys do your own maintenance like I do I'm particularly not going to really mess with this bike uh, because I don't want Aprilia you know denying me you know uh, the warranty work if something goes wrong with this bike because they'll say hey man you should have had the dealer do it or you should show video proof of this and that and this and that so I'm just going to have the dealer do it to stay within the warranty it's not a big deal I, but I'll probably sell this bike anyhow before it's uh, it's due. <laughs> I've got what 929 miles on it now. But I'll tell you that another thing about this bike, you know, it has all these electronics on here, and all the, a lot of the, you know, I think a lot of the Aprilia bikes, and you know, a lot of these new bikes have all these electronics on here, but you know. Uh, but definitely, you know, these these Italian bikes, especially this Aprilia, uh, you know, they're, they're finicky. You know what I'm saying? You saw when I first got this bike, 
issue that I had as far as it uh, stuttering and surging. Uh-oh. Alarm urgent service. Oh, no. Come on. I don't know what that was, but all they did was reload the software on the bike and it corrected the issues within less than a, less than a half hour. It wasn't a big deal. Bike runs good. Uh, but another thing I'll tell you guys, you know, I don't know about the other Prelia bikes, but I told you guys about it. If you want to put a slip on on this bike, you probably want to have the dealer do it, which I told you in a previous video. It's going to cost you here in Ohio, the Prelia dealer is going to charge you, charge you $2,000. That's if you want the Yashimura uh, Alpha T slip on that I had wanted, um, which is about $800, which is about in line with what the uh, Akrapovich pipe costs. Uh, they have to update the rate, race ECU. They got to do, you got to calibrate the throttle. Just make sure everything's in sync. And, let, you know, if you don't know how to do that and you want to try, I wouldn't recommend messing with YouTube, you know, looking at YouTube videos or, or uh, forum posts and trying to do it yourself, man. It's just, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> these bikes are real funny, man. Another thing is with these bikes, you can't go and mess with any wires. That Aprilia de dealer told me right off the bat, do not cut any wires on this bike. It will automatically throw up an error code on this bike. So when you put your fender eliminator kit, you just want plug and play. You don't want you don't want to alter with with the wires at all, any way, shape, or form. And by the way, another thing you need to know that the Aprilia mechanic told me. This is not me just talking them out of out of my rear. He said that uh, a lot of the Aprilias that come in there, most of the time, it's for electrical problems. Just to let you know. <laughs> so it, it's it's computer related or electrical or something to that extent usually with these bikes uh, and I'll tell you guys that's why I'm really hip I like the older bikes that don't have all the electronics crap on here you know on the bikes like my CBR 1000 double R except for fuel injection of course I'm not talking about that I'm talking about all these rider aids and, and everything uh, I say another thing you need to know honestly between the uh, the factory version that has an Olin suspension and the beautiful paint design that's on this bike uh, compared to the double R version, you'd probably be just fine going with the double R cheaper version because I'll tell you this Olin suspension uh, uh, is not all it's cracked up to be in my opinion for street use. Now for track it may be totally different uh, but for street use I my CBR 1000 double R show a stock show a suspension it's butter out here and it's better than this uh, Olean suspension but I have not had this Olean suspension adjusted to my weight as where is the C but the CBR 1000 double R I didn't have adjusted either so there you go this bike under like under 4,000 rpm and the lower rpms the bike is it's it's uh it's weird man it's like kind of uh not completely 100% smooth like my CBR is. It like, I don't know, it's kind of erratic a little bit. Just a little bit. It's not a big deal. It's like, it's just different from my CBR because I'm used to my CBR just 100% butter. Oh, man. And I'll tell you guys that as far as, yeah, it's not a big deal. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the main reason really I got this bike is because I love the uh, the Prairie paint scheme on it. <laughs> you know, I could care less about the suspension because out here, you know, on the streets, it's not a... The double R version is just fine. But it's, bu it's basic looking. It's budget looking. This one looks fancy. That's what I like about it. But it probably had better resale value possibly too. I don't know. But anyways, the power modes on this bike, uh, just to let you know, they're all full power. You know, uh, if you, the manual states basically it's just a difference in uh, engine braking, as where the sport mode has the most engine braking, the uh, the the track mode has less, and then the race mode I don't it has very little uh, engine braking, if any at all. They all feel the same to me, man, uh, because I coast. You see, I coast the stops, which I've always done to help. Uh, you know safe fuel it just wears down the brake pads a little more but not that big of a deal but so engine braking is not a big deal to me like i said all the rider modes feel the same 
Also, not only am I getting a measly 27 miles per gallon on this bike, which is by far the worst fuel efficiency I've ever had with any motorcycle, but the nozzle hole on the fuel tank is really small, so it makes it difficult to know when you fill the tank up, and sometimes you can overfill it. Um, I say another thing is, is that uh, you need to know is obviously Aprilia dealers are far and few in between. Uh, we only have the closest one here in Northeast Ohio. Uh, uh, it's pretty close to me. It's out in Peninsula, Ohio. But it is uh, the next closest one is out in Columbus or Pennsylvania. So uh, I'm sure you guys already know that. That's why a lot of you don't see a whole lot of people on a prey is because there's not that many dealerships out there. And uh, but these are really cool bikes. They're different, man. Like I said, if you want character, uh, definitely the Euro I don't know about the other European bikes, but Ducati and Aprilia has got all kinds of character, more so than Japan's bike. Another thing is with this particular bike, I'll tell you guys, the bar and mirrors are absolute. I like the bar and mirrors better than the stock mirrors. Stock mirrors are fine. But I love these bar and mirrors. By the way, links are in the description and comment section of my video. And uh, I'm, I did a full I'm, I did a full review video on these mirrors. So I don't know if it's up yet, but go check that video out once it's up. Woo! <laughs> this bike is fun, baby. I tell you, these Brem Brembo uh, M50 brakes are a boss. I love them, man. When I like I say when I get back on my CBR, it feels like Flintstones brakes. But overall, guys, you know, pretty and also by the way, parts obviously are more expensive for this bike. You know, it all comes down to supply versus demand. You know, the Japanese bikes. There's a ton of the bikes out there. There's a lot of dealers out there. It brings the parts prices down. You know, there's not a whole lot of Aprilia's out there. There's not a whole lot of demand for them. So obviously the part prices are going to be more expensive and, and not just for the OEM parts but for the aftermarket parts. Especially the slip-on exhaust. They're like, they're probably about a good 30% more a lot of the times. Overall, I'll tell you guys, owning an Aprilia is worth the experience so far. I really enjoy this bike. I love it. It's different. It has character. It's awesome. And I highly recommend it, man. I, so far, like I said, we'll see. I'll do a long-term review. I don't know how long I'm gonna keep this bike. Maybe towards the end, till the end of the year. Maybe early next year. Maybe I'll keep it even longer. I don't know, man. Uh, I'm thinking about possibly trying out the KTM 1290 Super Duke R. I don't know. But anyways, guys, for those of you guys who want to get my gear, like this neck brace, it's helped keep me safe, my leather jacket, helmets, camel pants, boots, gloves, all my stuff, I always include links in the description and comment section of my videos. Or also, go to my website at cyclecruiser.com and click on the menu tab, buy gear, and that's links to all my stuff. Thumbs up, check out my playlist for new riders and popular videos. Don't forget to comment and subscribe and check out my other channel, Bug Out Moto, where I customize a van for my motorcycle so I can live in my van with my motorcycle and travel across the country anywhere. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Bug Out Moto.